Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Um, today we're going to be doing another episode with the youth. Kirby is not going to be in this video. He's not able to make it. But today we have my little cousin Zoe. Hello. She's going to be the guest for this episode. And she's got a couple questions that we're going to go through. But before we get into the questions, Zoe, I want to ask you um, why are you interested in finance? Because not many people your age are interested in finance. Not many people my age are even interested. So what made you want to ask these questions? I would like to ask these questions because when I grow up, my second, like, I kind of want to be, when I grow up, I want to be a CFO. All right, you want to be a CFO. So what, what about being a CFO makes you interested or like what what is it about the cfo position that you like all the math the math okay so you like math yeah okay well that's good not a lot of people do so okay so what did you learn about being a cfo or did you learn about it in school or because yes, we had a field trip to jay this time okay so we each got like our own jobs okay so I was the CFO of Bush Gardens and I learned how they have to take care of taxes and they have to manage the money. Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of things they have to manage, especially in that position because it is a executive position. So do you have any questions about being a CFO? Do you want to go into the questions or was that one of your questions? No. No? CFO? Okay. Uh, so what is the first question you've got? How much money would I, should I spend on fun stuff? Alright, how much money should you spend on fun stuff? Um, so, fun, so it just depends on what your income is. And it depends on what your goals are. So, for someone who, let's say, let's just say for my case. So, um, me and Kirby, we talk a lot about like um, our backstory, and so for my case, I spend very little money on fun stuff, and it probably drives my wife crazy. But it's because I have goals to um, purchase more rental properties, to invest more. But it's with the idea that in the future I can use money from those investments to have the fun I would want to have you know I can live the life I want to have because instead of having to go to a job make money and then spend that I can go to a job make money invest it and then in the future once I keep doing that over and over those investments can just buy the things I want but for someone who just wants to just have a job a career it depends on how much they make so let's say they make 50,000 a year and they live on, let's say they live on 35,000. So they have 15,000 extra per year. They should create, you know, say a budget within that. Um, so how much are they gonna be putting away? How much are they gonna be um, using for entertainment? And a good base rule of thumb is say about 20% you save, right? Household income. So anything above that, you can kind of just, you know, budget out how much you want to spend per month for yourself. So really it just depends how much are you spending on necessities, your house, um, utilities, like the electric bill, the water bill, Wi-Fi, cell phone. There's a lot of different bills that you have to pay for first and beyond that, whatever's left over, you know, it's kind of what you decide on whether you want to spend that money for yourself or if you want to save it. In our case on this channel, we typically talk more about investing or saving that money. But if that didn't answer your question, just ask any questions that you might have off of that. That answered it. Okay. Okay. How bad is it if I wouldn't pay off my credit card? 
if you don't pay, <laughs> if you don't pay off your credit card, that's uh, that's pretty bad. Um, if you don't pay off your credit card in the sense that, like, let's say, like you never pay it off, right? I mean, there's different things that can happen. Either you can just keep making payments and like never pay it off because you keep using it and you're just making payments. Um, in that sense, you're holding yourself back from eliminating that monthly payment, right? So let's say every month you pay $200 to the credit card and you keep using it and you're still paying 200. If you got to a point where you can pay it off, now you don't have to spend that 200. Now you have that 200 to yourself, you know what I mean? But let's say you just like were late on payments or you never made payments, like that's worse even because um, now it's gonna affect your credit score um, and depending on how severe the debt and all of that, uh, the bank can go after you legally to get their money back from you. That sounds scary. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. <laughs> how much debt is too much debt? It just depends what kind of debt it is. If it's consumer debt, um, it just depends on your income. But we teach on our channel to basically pay off your consumer debt, um, car payments, credit cards, uh, any other debts you might have around the house. Um, most people can't go out and buy, let's say a house in cash, right? Because the house costs a lot of money. Um, but let's say you got to the point where you paid off your house, but beyond that, uh, let's say business debt, right? So you have a business and that business has credit, you get loans from banks and stuff. In my opinion, that kind of debt, there isn't too much because the more you have, if you're using it correctly, you can continue to grow and grow and grow your business. Um, let's say for Apple, right? The company Apple that makes iPhones and stuff. Uh, they have tens, hundreds of billions of dollars of debt. That's a lot. But the company is worth two trillion dollars. So a couple hundred billion compared to that, you know, that's it's nothing, you know? That debt they use to continue to invest in their company, to um, expand, and increase marketing, increase technology, and they continue to produce more and more money with the help of debt to push them faster. Because if you solely rely on your income to advance as a business, as an individual, um, it can be done, but it will take much more time. Whereas if you can get borrowed money to accelerate your growth, you can see results a lot faster. Okay. Okay. If I were to run my own business, what mm. insurance would I need? What insurance would you need? Um, wow, that's, uh, that's a good question. It depends what business you have. Um, I can't really tell you exactly like this is the insurance you need. Depending on what business, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have a construction business, right? You need contractors insurance and stuff like that. You know, if your contractors are doing work on a house and then they mess up the project and then the pipes burst or something like you have to pay for that because you you know you messed up you have to have insurance like that in that case um if you have a real estate business um you have to make sure you know some investors have umbrella insurance to where like you know it covers their 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 different units and properties like an umbrella like an umbrella, exactly. Um, and you wanna have, obviously you wanna have property insurance uh, for the renters. Uh, you wanna make sure that um, liabilities are covered if they, let's say there's an issue with the leveling in the house and your tenant is walking and they trip and they hurt themselves, that's on you as the landlord for not fixing that issue in the house and so they can go after you. So you have to have insurance for that as well. Um, so it just depends. There's different kinds of insurances for different kinds of businesses, all kinds of businesses. And then there's also different ways that um, you can protect yourself as a business owner, but that's 
um, that's like asset protection. It's a lot to go into. I can go into it if you want to, but it's, it's a lot to try and comprehend. Why does it involve the word asset? So asset, asset, not acid. Oh. Yeah, asset. <laughs> asset, like a tangible item. Yeah. What is insurance? Insurance is just a policy that you have um, basically connected with you or something that you own and you make payments to that policy and it, in exchange those insurance companies will cover you in a time of crisis let's say so like let's say home insurance right so you make payments um, either it could be monthly or you can make the full payment just there's different ways to pay it really um, but the payment that you make to that company they insure you in the sense that if there's a storm maybe and your roof is damaged you'll pay like say a deductible or they'll say you need to pay at least four thousand dollars but we'll cover the other sixteen thousand right so and the, they're basically they're taking a chance um, and so are you really, but if, let's say in most cases, you know, nothing really happens. So let's say like look in a whole neighborhood, right? Hundreds of houses and, you know, neighbors and people that live there. And you can even say for this neighborhood, how many times since your whole life that you've lived here, have you seen a house burn down here? Never. Exactly. But those insurance companies keep receiving money from those people, even though it's never happened. It can happen though, but it's not very likely. But that's how insurance companies are able to pay out to those, you know, issues because over 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there's never been a problem and they've received all this money. And now one person has their house burned down and they have to pay out. But they've already made so much money to be able to do that. What are finances? Finances are just anything that has to do with money. Um, it can be personal finance. It can be business uh, finance. Anything that has to do with money, really. That's the simplest way I could put it. Um, talking about bills can be finances. Talking about income can be finances. Um, talking about the value of everything you own can be finances. So it just depends. Anything that has to do with money is finance related. Okay. How do finances help our society? Finances help our society? <laughs> That's an in-depth question. <laughs> um, that's, that's hard to answer, but basically I could say this. In all of human history, people have tried to value something with an object, right? Um, back then, way, way back then, um, you know, people would trade cattle, right? They would have goats, they would have- Chickens. Yeah. Cows. And they would trade it, right? That was their form of wealth. They would have cattle, they would have land, maybe in other civilizations, they had silver, they had gold there's always been some kind of transactional object. Um, so because there's this system of understanding what uh, we understand as the economy or finances, um, it's kind of just an agreed upon system, you know? So really the dollar, like a hundred dollar bill, it, the paper, it's worth nothing. And in reality, the money itself is really worth nothing but we give it that value it's just chop tree yeah yeah it's just chop tree and it's just it's backed up by the given value of the government um but really that's not like real money um but then you know you have different assets not acid assets that you can invest in um such as houses so if you buy a house let's say you pay two hundred thousand dollars for a house that house over time will go up in value 
So, especially in the state of like uh, rental properties, right? So each time you raise rents, that property grows more and more in value because someone or say an investor would be willing to buy it from you because of the money it makes, right? And so people just value things based off of, in these days, um, currency. So whether it be the US dollar, the Euro, wherever you live, but it's just a system that we have in place to basically, in a sense, really just like compete, compete with others as you would with a scoreboard in the sports. Like football. Yeah, exactly. How do you start a business? Um, starting a business, you just do it. So you have to have an idea what you want to do. Um, you have to have a plan. You have to know how it's going to make you money. You have to know how much it's going to cost you. And if it's, if it's worth taking the risk, then just do it. Just, just do it. Just execute. And once you take that step to start the business, um, there's different things you can do to structure it properly. Um, when you do a business, you don't want to do it in your name because it puts you at risk. So let's say you were selling lemonade, okay? So I don't know if you like lemonade, but let's just say lemonade, right? And it was just like, Zoe's lemonade stand. And then I drank it and I got sick, I could sue you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if, and so because I could sue you, I could take everything you have if I like fought hard enough, right? I could shut down your business, everything. But if you said, okay, I'm gonna start a business, but then I'm gonna open what they call an LLC, which is a limited liability company. That basically says, okay, this business, Zoe's Lemonade, is going inside of the LLC, okay? So it's no longer in your name. It's not in your social security name, or I'm sorry, your social security number. It's now in a business EIN number, right? So now it's separate, it's out of your name, the, your business owns that name now, Zoe's Lemonade. So, you got a question? What does EIN mean? EIN? Yeah. Um, employee Identification Number. So, you would take that business, <clears throat> now the business owns that title or that trademark, that, um, that uh, name brand, right? And now, let's say I still drink your lemonade and I got sick, okay? I could sue your LLC, but that's it. I can't sue you. So, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it protects you. So that's like what I was talking about. That's asset protection. So, let's say you personally, you own a house, you own cars, stuff like that. Um, now, to be completely open with you, there are some people that will fight harder to try and go after you because they'll be like, oh, but Zoe owns this business. You know what I mean? But in most cases, that business protects you from them taking your cars, your house. They can only take, let's say, just your lemonade stand, right? That's the only thing the business owns. The lemons, the water, the sugar, that's all they can take. And so you are safe. So I have a shield. Yes, practically. exactly. And there is some pretty cool ways how you can really, really protect yourself. Why do we have inflation? Inflation is caused by various things. So are you referring to today, like in the US? So inflation in the US today has a lot of reasons, right? So when they did during COVID, there was there were stimulus checks that they mailed out to the citizens, right? In order to mail out those stimulus checks, they had to print money. So that, by printing money, depreciates the value of the dollar again. So that's why they said, you know, the dollar is not real money. So when they did that, 
instead of people using that money, saving it, investing it, what do most people do? If someone gave you sixteen hundred dollars, what would you do? What? Would you go spend it? I would spend a little bit, <laughs> yeah. not all of okay. it. Okay, most people aren't like you. Most people will spend everything, right? Well, so when you give sixteen hundred dollars to every American, right? That's a lot of money. So when people start to take that money and they start to buy, like, let's say one of the biggest things that got me mad was Oreos were like seven dollars. I've never seen that. When you when they sell eggs. Yes, Those eggs. Are really expensive. So eggs are a little bit different because eggs there was like a sickness, right? There was a sickness that happened with the chickens and all that. So the eggs, there weren't as many eggs to sell. And so what that is, is basically supply and demand. So there's not enough supply and people are still wanting their eggs, right? Is that why they're so expensive? Yes, exactly. I mean, you should just buy chicken. Right, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, that was cheaper. But so think about it. So let's say, let's say you have a business, right? And let's say, let's say, let's just use the lemonade stand, right? Let's go back to that. Let's say you have enough to make 50 cups of lemonade a day, right? But then let's say like people are like, oh, Zoe's got the best lemonade on the block. So, so then they start advertising your business and more and more people come, right? So then let's say you have a thousand people that want your lemonade. It's too much business, right? You want to sell it to all of them, but you can only make 50 cups a day. So how do you get rid of so much demand? Each lemonade, instead of let's say two dollars, is now twenty dollars. Oh, that's too expensive, I think. <laughs> exactly, it is. But that'll make some of those people that really want your lemonade, they'll pay for it. But the rest, they'll walk away. And they'll go away. So that's how, when you raise the price, it drops the demand, and then it can kind of level back out. I would say just get employees. That's, and that is the best way to go. That is the best way to go. But, you know, it also depends, you know, if, like I said, you know, if there's a sickness with chickens, you can't really employ enough people to fix, you know, sick chickens, you know what I mean? So that, in that case, there can be things that go bad. Um, or let's say uh, the lemons you had went bad, right? But some of them were still good, but you still had all of that demand now you still have to raise the price up because the so man exactly so there's a lot of things that can cause it obviously supply and demand is the basic one um well it's actually not the basic one it's the, it's what actually sets you know whether there's inflation or not but there's different things that cause that inflation so like we said with um the stimulus checks going out right the other thing that also caused inflation was uh, the government put pauses on people having to pay their mortgages, their rent, um, student loans. So when you put pauses, it's the same thing. If you're used to paying, say, $3,000 a month between rent, student loans, and all that stuff, and now you don't have to pay it because the government just froze it, now you have all that money to yourself people go out and they spend that money. They put a pause button on it. Mm -hmm. The government put a pause button on it. So people are irresponsible with money and so they go out and they spend that money. And because there's so many people spending money, it raises the price of everything because there's too much demand. That would be too much money. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of businesses saw their most profitable year in 2021 because of that because there was too much money they saw the most money come in for the business so that's good kind of for that year yeah um but because it was so explosive you know things start to it, all those factors affect the economy you know so when they're is that much money or when the market is that high things end up for seven as they say what comes up must go down and so other things cause the market to actually come back down 
And so we're actually now in that period where companies are laying off employees and you're seeing housing prices drop because when the government saw that everything was going up, they had to raise rates, interest rates, right? So where interest rates were, let's say you want to buy a house, right? Because now you have all this money, you're not paying student loans, you don't have to make your house payment, you're getting stimulus checks. So you buy a house and because you bought a house, during that time, interest rates say were 2%, right? So you only pay the bank 2% on the loan you have, right? So let's say for a house you pay $200,000 on, let's say your payment would be like $1,100, right? $1,000 maybe. But then now that the government wants to raise rates because there's too many people buying everything, so now that same $200,000 house, they raise the rate to 7 8%, your payment is now $1,700, $1,800, $2,000. So it's almost so it's double, you know what I mean? So yeah, so now houses don't sell as fast. When uh, companies go to get debt to grow their business from the banks, the banks charge them too much interest. So the companies can't afford to make these huge interest payments and keep employees. So they have to let go of their employees so they can get the debt. So a lot of things affect the economy in that way too. So they just fire the person because they can't manage their own money? It's not because they can't manage their money. They are managing their money. Because stuff is too expensive. Exactly. So the business is managing their money, but the employee is a liability to their company instead of making their money. So they let go of the employee. That's sad. Yes, it is. And those are decisions as a CFO you would have to make. Is that why gas prices are so high? Gas prices are different. So gas prices are high. It's, I mean, it's similar. Um, the demand is higher because of the, well, I'm sorry, the supply is lower. So the demand is still the same. Because right. it's a natural gas. So, because natural gases take longer time to be made. Yes. But, so we actually, in the United States, we had our own oil. And the government, the new government, put a pause or a stop to production for, you know, whatever political affairs, right? But because they put a pause to that production, the demand is still there. People still need to drive around. But now we don't have as much oil, right? So when you do that, it shuts off the supply. Demand stays the same. So the price goes higher. That is a lot of money. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. How do you minimize taxes? How do you minimize taxes? Is that a thing? That's my favorite question. All right, so no illegal advice here, okay? This is legally how you can pay less taxes, right? So what I'm referring to is income taxes. You have to pay property taxes. You have to pay, if you are if you have a business, you have to pay employee taxes. You have to pay sales tax. But income tax, let's say, and just, do you know what income tax is? No. Okay. That was gonna be my next question. <clears throat> okay, good question. So income tax is, let's say you go to work, right? And let's say you're making, let's say you like become a lawyer, right? And let's say you're making like, $250,000 a year. They get paid that much? Lawyers make a lot of money. Depending on what, I mean, some lawyers make way more. What about mechanics? Mechanics can make a lot of money too. Yeah. If you're a very good mechanic and you do the job quick, yeah. Automotive engineers. Yes. Yes, yes, that too. So let's say you're making like, let's say you went through school for like eight, 10 years, right? You're working hard, studying. You're making like two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, right? And then let's say your first paycheck is so it's gonna be like 30 grand, right? 20, 30 thousand dollars. But the government gives you 10,000. How does that make you feel? That makes <laughs> me feel mad. That, that is so rude. Okay, That's yes. rude. Okay, exactly. So 
the government charges you income tax, right? And it wasn't always like this, right? But the government is sneaky. So back then, there was no income tax. There was tax that they charged citizens for when there was a war. They needed to gather money to defend the country, right? And there was property taxes and things like that. But there was never an income tax, right? But then a lot of people that made less than the rich people said, Oh, the rich people are evil. They're making all the money. We need to tax them, right? Yeah, but... They're not evil. Exactly. They're just making more money. They're working they're hard, right? They're just being jealous. Exactly. No, exactly. So they were saying, oh, they're evil. So then, you know, the government was like, okay, we can raise taxes. Or we can start charging taxes on income. The difference is, remember when I explained to you how a business puts their business inside of an LLC or something like that? LLC. Right, so you have LLCs and you also have corporations. Similar things, right? Because the rich people put their business inside of that, they don't get taxed like you would working a job. So they pay a corporate tax, which is today it's only 21%. So let's say you make $250,000 as a lawyer. You'll probably get paid at the end of the year, let's say like 150,000 because the government just took $100,000 of taxes. But a corporation will probably make about, let's say, 180, 200,000 because their tax rate's lower. But also they get tax deductions, which means, let's say the rich person wants to go buy a yacht. He can say, oh, that was a business expense. So his business, let's say his business made a million dollars and his yacht cost a million dollars. So now, and this is just a quick analogy. It's not, you know, you have to look more into the tax game, but let's just say he writes off that expense. Now, when he does his taxes, it shows he made zero dollars, so he doesn't have to pay any taxes. But you, if you make a million dollars at a job, you have to pay taxes because you don't get write-offs because it's not a business. What's a write-off? A write-off is, good question. So a write-off is when you buy something as a business, but you buy something that you need as a business, right? So because you buy that, because you buy something that you need as a business, the government allows you to write it off from your income because it's a necessity. So let's say like you selling lemonade, right? They In order, lemons and exactly, sugar. lemon, sugar, water. You need that stuff for your business. So if you made hundred thousand dollars a year selling lemonade but the lemonade cost you forty thousand dollars to make the the government will only tax you on sixty thousand because they said okay you needed the forty thousand to buy the inventory that wasn't your real money this is your profit we'll tax your profit like how mechanics need to buy tools mm -hmm. and do they need to buy gas no well, so, I, I wouldn't think so. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe some do in some situations. Yeah. But you could probably, if you did have to buy gas as a mechanic, you probably could say, oh, I needed it. But those, that's what a write-off is. So taxes, right? So that is income tax. And so you're taxed at a different rate, depending on how much money you make per year. So if you only make $40,000 a year, you tax less than someone making $400,000 a year. Uh, the tax rate is different. But the way to minimize your taxes is you put it in a corporation. You have a corporation, your corporation makes money or your LLC makes money because write-offs is what allows you to minimize your taxes. So the write-offs, like I said, you know, you, Let's say you are a mechanic, right? So anything you need in your shop, when you buy that, you can write it off from your income. So remember, when you write it off, you're only writing it off from your income. So let's say um, you make $100,000 a year as a mechanic, but your tools and everything cost you, let's say 30,000, right? You making 100,000, normally you'd be in 
one tax bracket paying like I want to say it's twenty eight percent. I think so. They'll tax you on so they'll take twenty eight thousand dollars out for taxes, right? That's a lot. It is a lot. But let's say you wrote off thirty thousand dollars from tools from your income, so it brings you down from one hundred thousand to seventy thousand. So then they'll tax you on a different bracket because now at seventy thousand, I think I can't look it up right now, but I think you would be in a different tax bracket. I think it's twenty two percent. So they'll tax you on twenty two percent of seventy thousand because that's your final profit. So that's how you minimize taxes: is you create a business and you get entitled to write offs. That's how you minimize taxes in a legal way. In a legal way, yes. <laughs> In a legal way, and you can also do it with real estate. Um, and the government also allows you to um, write off the property taxes you pay. A lot of people don't know this, but the sales tax you pay. So, now this is not tax advice. This is just educational entertainment. Okay, because I don't want anyone to try and say I gave them bad information. But so let's say you know when you buy something like at the store. And it says sales tax like a dollar thirty cents or something like that. So that tax amount on your receipt, you can save your receipts throughout the year, and you can add it up and turn that into your accountant, and that can be written off from the income that you make. So there's different ways. So, and it's basically because you've already paid tax, so on that end, so you can write it off from your income tax. What's a tax bracket? Tax brackets are categories that they put you in, depending on how much money you make. So there's different brackets. There's like fifteen percent, eighteen percent, twenty-two, twenty-eight. I think the highest goes up to thirty-seven percent. Like I said, doctors, lawyers, they're paying thirty-seven percent, and that's only for federal income tax. And so in Florida, we only pay federal income tax, which goes up to thirty-seven percent. But people living in California. Or New York, they pay federal and then they pay state tax. So let's say you made five hundred thousand dollars a year in Florida, you would come home with. Gosh, I should have just said a million. Let's just say a million, make it easier. Okay, so I can do math quicker. If you make a million dollars a year, thirty-seven percent would be three hundred seventy thousand dollars, right? So you would be left with six hundred thirty thousand dollars. Okay, but if you made a million dollars a year in California, you pay the federal and then the state tax, which adds up to I think it's fifty-one percent. So you would only get four hundred ninety thousand. So they take out one hundred forty thousand dollars more from your check. That's still a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Okay, how do I prioritize expenses? Prioritize expenses? What do you mean? In what way? In what way do you? What do you mean? Like. How do you minimize it, or how do you only spend what's necessary, or what do you spend mean? what's necessary? Spend what's necessary. Um. So prioritizing your expenses in that way, the biggest thing is keeping in mind money. In most cases, is an emotional object, right? Like if you've always wanted something. And you have the money to buy it. You really feel like you want to buy it, right? Yeah. Okay. So controlling that emotion is the only way you can really prioritize the expense. If you can control that, then of course there's other ways you can look into saying, okay, what are my expenses? Do I need to pay for the iPhone Forever plan with T-Mobile, right? Which is a plan that allows you to. You know, have, always upgrade to the new iPhone. Is that necessary? Not really. Um, or let's say you have a Bush Gardens pass and you only go one time a year, but you pay for it every month. Then what's the point of having one? Exactly. Exactly. So those are other ways you can prioritize the expenses as far as if you can control that emotion and then see what your expenses are and just take out the ones that aren't necessary. So just be like, I cannot buy this because I want to, <laughs> but I can't. Exactly. Especially if you're on a budget. Now, of course, 
Um, you know, if you live way below your means and you make a good income, there's nothing wrong with buying what you want. You know, but you always want to live below your means. Meaning, you know, if you make a hundred thousand a year, try and live off of fifty thousand. And so you have fifty thousand to yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's basically. What's a mean? Mean. So living below your means is just the same. Like um, you're living below your income. What's an income? You don't know what an income is? So, okay, so an income is the money you make from a job, from a business, uh, from an investment. That money that comes to you is an income. <laughs> oh, so it's basically the name. It's coming in. <clears throat> or... I think. I don't know. I'm not an English professor, but I would assume so. Maybe. Yes. Because don't want to get it wrong, but... Exactly. No wrong advice. Yeah. No, wrong. Exactly. no wrong advice. When would, let's say, a lawyer retire? I don't think it really matters what um, job they have because a lawyer that makes half a million dollars a year and they spend half a million dollars a year, they won't have any money to retire, you know? So it depends on the person themselves and how much money they have for retirement. Retiring is an ability. It's not something everybody can do. So you have to make sure that you set yourself up to retire. And especially today, most, uh, most companies, the military no longer gives pensions. Um, which is like a retirement plan where they pay you, you know, every month. They no longer do that. Um, so uh, there's a lot of, you know, Social Security. They say by 2030, there won't be any more Social Security. So you have to set money aside to retire. Social Security is a government payment plan that they pay you at... I think it's 65 years old. So taxes that you pay at your job, if you look at your paycheck, you'll see the taxes, right? You pay federal income taxes. If you live in a state where you pay state taxes, you also pay state taxes. You pay Medicare, I believe, or Medicaid taxes. And then you pay social security taxes. So that social security tax is put away into the social security program. And depending on your income, you're paid X amount of dollars by retirement. That's about it. Okay, that's it. That's all you got? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.